Right, so here we are in Reproductive Strategies Revisited. Uh, I left you at the end of the last uh, part of the lecture pondering why these things from the survey uh, don't fit with the evolutionary psychology picture I painted for you. Uh, why would men, uh, you know, besides the fact that they're trying to lie to make themselves more desirable to women, why would they say that they are interested in a family, that they're reliable, or that they're caring? Well, again, let's think evolutionarily. Uh, should males and females have different reproductive strategies regarding fidelity? And I'm talking about wanting a family, wanting to care for the children, uh, wanting to stay faithful uh, to one partner, a wife, for example, uh, for life. That's what we're really talking about here. So now, would both males and females want to, you know, regard fidelity as a great or a good reproductive strategy? And again, let's think about the idea of more grandchildren. Uh, would fidelity for men lead to greater, greater numbers of grandchildren? Would fidelity for women lead to greater numbers of grandchildren? So, if we think about it, what I've described to you so far is that females should seek fidelity. Uh, if you think about it, a woman having a husband, uh, you know, staying with her, that's an extra caretaker. And that extra caretaker taker, taker, uh, taker improves the child's success and the likelihood uh, of having grandchildren. So, you know, having a faithful husband who will stick around and not go off to impregnate other women, uh, that will certainly improve her evolutionary strategy of having a few children with good genes, uh, and I didn't say the husband's genes, but good genes and having some guy stick around uh, to help raise the children. That doubles the amount of caretakers, doubles maybe the successfulness uh, of the children growing up and successfully having grandchildren. However, the picture I painted to you already says that males should avoid fidelity. Uh, the males take the numbers approach. They want to have as many children as possible. Some may survive. That's good. Uh, and so they have as many children with as many different partners as possible. Some may survive and that's how they get grandchildren. Some may survive, some may grow up, some may grow up and have grandchildren. Fidelity interferes with this. So this is the evolutionary picture I've painted so far, which is pretty much true in a lot of mammalian species. Uh, however, this is true for most mammal species but not humans. That is, in most mammals, uh, we see uh, the numbers game taken by males, and we see the idea of females focusing on the success of just a few uh, humans. This is true for most mammals, but not humans. Oh, uh, here's a picture of some border collie puppies in a wheelbarrow. That's because uh, as I said, uh, York students are generally sexually conservative, so I know this has been a rough lecture. Uh, we're getting it into really rough territory now. So here's some puppies to take the edge off. Oh, puppies, so cute. Look at those little noses. Don't you want to boop those noses? They're cold and wet. Okay, so what do I mean by accept humans? Well, Here's why. Uh, if you talk to a evolutionary biologist, uh, they would explain to you that across all of the mammalian species, again, across all the non-mammalian species, reproduction is like a war between the genders. In that, 
uh, each gender in each species is trying everything possible to get the upper hand on the other uh, gender. So uh, female fish are trying every uh, evolutionary change possible to create a situation to get the upper hand on male fish. Male fish are trying to do the same thing to the female fish. Of course, trying gives the indication that they consciously want to do it. This is evolution. What's going on is that uh, mutations are occurring. Uh, they're occurring in males. They're occurring in females. And if one of these mutations in a female allows the female to you know, reproduce more successfully than other females, that gene will uh, usually spread across the entire species. And so what that means is if a female fish has a mutation that allows it to get the upper hand on males and be more pro uh, productive that way in terms of children, uh, then that gene will probably be very successful and spread across all the females uh, in that species, uh, putting the males at a disadvantage. And uh, then the males would have to fight back uh, the same way, that is, they get a random mutation that puts them ahead of the females, uh, then uh, you know, that would be successful and spread across all the males in that species. And what I'm going to describe to you is one of those tricks that human females or women uh, have uh, pulled and by pulled I mean evolutionarily this was a random mutation which was successful as you'll see and which changed the uh, you know situation for men and men had to cope with it or men had to have a random mutation that allowed them to cope with it. So what is the little trick? Uh, humans have the highest miscarriage rate among all mammals by far a incredible uh, incredibly high miscarriage rate uh, and that is like crazy because why would evolution want to program in a miscarriage rate? Uh, that is if you're trying to reproduce uh, then you want to be able to have sex, uh, you know, have uh, you know, implantation of the uh, fetus and then have the fetus come to term. You don't want to program in a miscarriage. So this doesn't really make evolutionary sense uh, at first glance. So humans have an incredibly high miscarriage rate uh, among all the other mammals. Uh, just a couple you know, facts about this. Uh, on average, anytime you have intercourse as a human being, you have a, on average a 5% chance to become pregnant. Uh, and on average, 25% of the pregnancies end in a miscarriage. A lot of people uh, who have had unprotected sex uh, and think that they're lucky that they did not get pregnant, uh, many times they did get pregnant, but they had a miscarriage and never knew that they were pregnant. Uh, but in general, at some point during the pregnancy, a quarter of all pregnancies end in a miscarriage. Uh, so that's weird, and that is really counterintuitive from a evolutionary perspective, because why, if you're going through all the problem of you know, having intercourse, shouldn't that end in a successful pregnancy? Uh, it doesn't make evolutionary sense. Well, here's now the weird part. This risk of miscarriage is elevated if you have cohabitated with your partner for less than four months and if you and your partner are using a barrier method for contraception such as a condom. Uh, wait, wait, so let's think about this. So what this is saying is let's say you get together with a new partner and you start having unprotected sex, that means that during the first four months that you're having unprotected sex, you have a higher chance of having a miscarriage than like after four months. So yeah, yeah, that's exactly what we're talking about. And after four months, the risk of miscarriage drops. Okay. Or then, if you've been using, for example, a condom 
uh, for a year with your new partner and then you stop using a condom well now you're back to year month zero so you stop using the condom and you automatically now have a higher miscarriage rate however you stop using the condom for four months and that miscarriage rate drops down uh, you know lowers what what's going on this is weird really weird uh, biologists talk about this and they actually use this exact term uh, the female's immune system must be inoculated with the partner's sperm yes that you heard me correct uh, the female's immune system must be inoculated to recognize the partner's sperm that is there are several immune modulating factors present in seminal fluid uh, one example is TGF beta I'm not a biologist so I don't know what that means but it makes me sound impressive uh, and what happens is the more a female is exposed to these immune factors the lower the risk of miscarriage gets so what's going on is this uh, the woman you know, women have a high rate of miscarriage because what's going on is they need to get used to a partner's uh, immune factors in their seminal fluid and once their their body is recognizing these immune factors then their miscarriage rate drops uh, and then also a couple uh, one other thing you need to remember uh, human immune system tolerates things better when it enters the body via the mouth because the alimentary canal is designed to deal with uh, invading uh, you know microbes and things like that so what that means is there's a strong negative correlation between oral sex and miscarriage rate and vaginal sex and miscarriage that is the more you have oral sex the lower your miscarriage rate will be and likewise the more you have vaginal you know uh, you know non barrier vaginal sex the lower your miscarriage rate will be so uh, also this correlation is even stronger if the semen is swallowed because swallowing the semen allows the rest of the alimentary canal to process the immune factors so now we're ready to put the picture together what happened was the basic story that I explained about uh, women uh, you know uh, you know, you know, seeking fidel. No, let's go back a little bit more just to make this clear. I have to go back a long way. Okay, uh, by men. Uh, nope, even farther. I want to go back to reaper. There we go. Here we go. Uh, men uh, want to impregnate uh, as many women as possible uh, they are averse to fidelity uh, and they're taking a numbers approach women are taking the all the eggs in one basket approach and fidelity would work out for them because then they have an extra caretaker that would help them out immensely uh, this probably was true among human beings until at one point the mutation for in women for miscarriages miscarriages specifically to semen or sperm their body's immune system does not recognize uh, you know that situation was probably true until women evolved this response this puts women at an advantage over men men would like to use their numbers approach to mating and reproduction however what happens is this miscarriage rate related to unrecognized sperm uh, you know immune factors what this does is that this 
throws a monkey wrench into men's reproductive strategy of playing the numbers game. Uh, why is that? Well, who would be more adapted to this new situation? Men who have sex indiscriminately with several women or males who have sex in a long-term relationship? And then think grandchildren. So are males who go around having sex with as many women as possible, well, they're going to only have sex once or twice with each woman and then move on. So if the woman does get pregnant, uh, then what's going to happen is there's going to be more likely that that uh, you know, uh, fetus is going to be miscarried carried because the uh, woman's body is not recognizing the male's immune factor. And so this strategy will now become non-adaptive because if your uh, you know, uh, fetuses are becoming uh, miscarried, then they can't grow up and pass that gene to have sex with as many women as possible uh, on to the next generation. Right. However, let's say in response to what happened in terms of the miscarriage rate, one man has a genetic mutation that says, uh, stay in a long-term relationship with a woman. And so she, he stays in a long-term relationship. Uh, the woman recognizes his immune factor and uh, the miscarriage rate drops and they have viable children uh, who are born and then grow. And let's say the male hangs around for at least four years. In primitive societies, four years is usually as long uh, the length that you have to spend a lot of energy raising a child then after that you just make the child hang out with the village children and they kind of take care of each other. So as long as you have like a four year long relationship uh, you're uh, going to be in a relationship where the mother may have a couple different children by you uh, and uh, you are uh, ensuring that you know you're helping them get off the ground and then also uh, you're avoiding the whole uh, you know miscarriage situation because you're in a long-term relationship and so again going back to this idea of the war between the genders or the sexes uh, the w women uh, pulled a whammy evolutionary evolutionarily which made men change the way they deal with things. So when men say that they are caring and that they are interested in a relationship and children, it's probably true because they have to have that strategy to overcome this problem with miscarriages. And so what happened was women's bodies changed the whole situation and this caused men to change what they wanted in a relationship. And so that is the really surprising thing about revisiting reproductive strategies. Uh, the game was changed at one point on human males by human females sometime in the last uh, couple hundred thousand years. And that's the end of part three. Now we're going to go on to some really amazing stuff with experimental ev evolutionary psychology in part four.